Ladies, gentlemen, and you beautiful in-betweens, hello and welcome to my desktop. I am Computer, and recently EA revealed a trailer for Star Wars Squadrons, and that has sparked a lot of conversations about how good games like TIE Fighter and X-Wing were. And with that conversation, inevitably also comes the conversation of how hard it is to get them to work properly on modern computers. So I figured I should make a small little tutorial on how I've made them run not only on modern systems, but make them look good and sound good while they're doing it. And in this particular video, I will be dealing with the special editions of TIE Fighter and X-Wing as well as X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. With that out of the way, I'm using the GOG versions of these games. While the Steam versions now also contain the collector's CD versions, it's not they're not as stable as the GOG versions, and a lot of the mods don't work with the Steam versions of the games. There are a lot of things you can do to make the Steam versions uh, work and look good, but I don't own the Steam versions, so I can't show you that. Instead, what I can do is give you a link to a guide and leave that in the description as well as in the pinned comment. With that also out of the way, there is one last hurdle. If you're using a joystick, but also have an Xbox controller plugged in, it's possible that Windows decides that the Xbox controller, being a Microsoft product, is the default one or preferred device. And because of that, X-Wing and TIE Fighter and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter will simply think, oh, you want to use the Xbox controller, which, if you have a joystick plugged in, isn't what you want to do. To fix that, you go into the control panel, devices and printers, Right-click either the joystick in question or your Xbox controller, choose Game Controller Settings, Advanced, and select the preferred device, in my case, an X52 Professional. OK, 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 and close. Finally, we can see what the game looks like out of the box. Bit pixelated, but good looking good. I miss those guys. Now let's skip the intro and give them a name and we're a flight cadet that's all fine there's no music here none whatsoever we have some ambience and a tannoy system but no music that cannot be fixed in x-wing sadly uh, it, it, it is fixed or can be fixed in tie fighter but not in x-wing it's a bummer but there it is let's just get into level one and our joystick is working just fine. However, this isn't looking very good, is it? It's very pixelated, and the platforms are extremely bright, and it just doesn't look good, and we don't have any music, right? So we can fix one of those things. Yes, thank you. By going into the settings with escape and then flight options and set the brightness down. Back to options, okay, thank you. And re-enter. Now they're not quite as bright and it's a bigger issue when you come up against something like a Star Destroyer or, I don't know, uh, freighters, for instance. It's looking a little bit better. Not a lot, but a little. So let's make it look real good. And to do that, we need a browser window and these four websites. Link in the description, naturally, and they are listed in the order that you should install them as well. Or you can just follow this video and do as I do. So first off, we want X-Wing Direct Draw. Uh, it's also called X-Wing Alliance Direct Draw. It works on X-Wing, TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, and X-Wing Alliance. And you click there, you let it download, uh, you want just a guy's X-Wing series 60 FPS fix, which makes everything a lot more smooth. So click there and click there and wait for it to start download as well. Penultimately, and maybe you want this, maybe you don't, but I'm leaving it in here because it's a pretty massive change to the game. Oh, and yes, thank you. 
this replaces the uh, m uh, movie soundtrack that is added to the special edition of TIE Fighter and replaces it with uh, a reorchestrated and enhanced version of the MIDI version, the MIDI music from the collector CD. As well, the voices or the voice, the quality of the voice acting and the, just the sound files in the special edition was very degraded compared to the collector CD. So this takes the collector CD voices and just imports them into the special edition, making it sound a lot better. And you click this link. This only works with GOG, sadly. Does not work with Steam. Oh, oh and well, also the original Windows uh, physical CD, if you still have that, you can use this as well. Finally, we want X-Wing and TIE Music Fix. Click there, download. This, you might think that TIE Constructed fixes the music, but it doesn't. This is compatible with the Direct Draw uh, mod, while Constructed is not. So it, you need both of them, sadly. And also this fixes the music for X-Wing, which TIE Constructed doesn't. So with all of those downloaded, it's still running, but I have it already. So let's cancel that and just go like so. And to install these, you just open a file. Uh, what is this called actually? Is it just file browser these days? I don't know, file explorer. And you go, let's go with TIE Fighter first. Oh, I, and this is in C games, GOG Galaxy games, and then the game in question. And you open, copy, replace. You can like do backup copies of everything if you want. I've done this a couple of times and I know it works. Although it will be quite funny if it doesn't. Let's hope it uh, works. And let's just copy the music and the voices. And notice that there is a TIE95.exe there, which is a modified version of the original TIE95.exe. Uh, you can skip that because we will be replacing it with this TIE95.exe instead. And yes, you actually do need to replace this. It it won't work otherwise. So let's close all of those. Now let's do the same thing for X-Wing 98 here. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Replace, send in. We don't use TIE Fighter Reconstructed naturally and we use the X-Wing fix here. Enter, just move it in. Finally, Let's do the exact same thing for X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. There we go. Place. All good. And no fix for the music, sadly. But I believe we won't have a problem with that. Don't quote me on that, but we'll find out soon enough. Finally, let's see what it looks like. We use our little pilot here. You may proceed. Thank you. Again, no music here. Just a tannoy and some rumbling. It's a bummer, but what can we do? Uh, before we enter, let's go into flight options and turn on 3D hardware. I am going to turn off music very quickly once we get into game. I'm just going to let you sh hear that it's there because Disney don't like their music on YouTube. And the entire soundtrack of this game is just music from the movies. So uh, not a good thing for, you know, generally. The cockpit here is uh, fairly pixelated. So let's remove it and just look at... It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Also, maybe... Ah. 
especially if you're flying on the Death Star later. Oh, spoiler. Um, it looks pretty darn good with this. We can make it look a little bit better, though. This is Red Leader. Yes, yes, yes. It's very nice of you. By going into File Explorer and going back into... Uh, let's go with the TIE Fighter, actually. And we find this little file here, which we gained from the first mod we installed. Right there. And it will let us make some changes. In here, we can tell the game to not preserve aspects ratio if we want, but I rather wanted to do that, so I'm going to leave it at 1. Full screen mode here. You can either, either go with bordered window mode or leave it at default, which is what I'm going to do. You can set it to be uh, full screen mode. However, if you have two monitors and you set it to one and then move your mouse cursor to the left, it's going to leave the game window and you're going to see your mouse mer uh, cursor moving around on the other monitors. It's a little discombobulating, so I'm not going to do that, but it might fix some of the issues I've been having in my Let's Play where my mouse cursor simply disappears if I move it too far down, maybe? I don't know. But uh, I'm going to play around with it, but for now it looks a little bit weird having the mouse cursor move uh, around on another monitor while I'm playing, so no. And we can play around with the game resolution. You can't tell it to be 1080p, sadly. Uh, but yeah. So it's moving on. Uh, Anti-aliasing, thank you. Anisotropic filtering, I want to set that to 1. And then we have scaling type. Standard linear scaling for 0. Smoother alpha blend scaling, line cost scaling, or point sampling. I'm going to go with line cost scaling, actually. Yeah. We can also turn off vSync if we want, but this mod here only goes up to 60. So it's not really going to do a lot. So I'm going to enable it to, or leave it enabled, so to speak. And the final thing I'm going to talk about is this thing here, where the triggers on an Xbox controller normally works as throttle, which is a problem because it means you always have to hold down the right trigger to go at full speed. If you let go, it's going to drop down to 50% because both triggers are part of the um, that particular axis. However, setting it to zero only fixes part of the problem. It doesn't make the triggers work as buttons. In order to do that, you need to use something like Joy to Key, where you can tell Joy to Key to interpret uh, button commands and even sticks and axes uh, and your triggers, and tell it to uh, tell them to act as keyboards. Now, you notice something weird here, that it uh, tracks as both button 12 and button 2. That is because I have in the options, forgot to remove this, uh, yeah, button 11 acts as button 1, uh, button 1, and button 12 acts as button 2, which means left trigger is button 1, and right trigger is button 2. And then you can just tell it to be, let's say, Button 1 is the letter A. So now, if I go in here and press the trigger, keep saying, uh, so yeah. It's one way to get around it, and I'm going to clear that and clear the button map later on. Uh, or forget it, that'll be fun too. And then you can also invert the axis of the y-axis, so you can pull down on the left stick to go down rather than up. And then you can invert th the throttle, and you can change the mouse, sen mouse sensitivity. I like to leave it at 0.5, but one, it flies all over the screen. And then we have some debug options, refresh limits, and things for X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and X-Wing Alliance. Things like the um, 
this uh, config file and these DLC, uh, DDLs or DLLs. I cannot talk today for some reason. Uh, realize that they're in XVing uh, alliance mode and add a few things like mitmaps and uh, stuff like that. And also this auto patch here. Uh, if you set it to one, then it will force a software cursor, which is something you want, actually. Because if you don't have the software cursor, you will have two cursors on the screen. One to the uh, upper left of the screen, and then the normal one, which is the one that actually counts when you click things. And then level two is fixing... Star Destroyer's lasers not firing, which is a bigger problem in the Collector's CD than it is in the Special Edition. In the Collector's CD, um, Capital weapon, Weapons Fire is tied to the cycles of your CPU. Or if you're using the GOG version, it's tied to the cycles in DOSBox, which means that you have to limit your frame rate in order to get uh, Capital Ships to fire, which isn't ideal. Which is why in my Let's Play I switched from the Collector CD to the Special Edition where I can keep 60 FPS at all times without having to worry about ships not firing. And if you want to... It also um, force a highest mid-map mid level for better quality and textures. Or better texture quality if we're supposed to uh, read it correctly. And you can change the uh, text as well, which is kind of weird, but fine. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all we need to change. And finally, we do the exact same thing with the config file in X-Wing as well. So we want uh, multi-sampling, yes, we want line cost scaling, and everything else was as is. And that should be good. Now, um, in TIE Fighter, it, this new, these new scaling options don't do a lot of difference. If you're paying attention, you can see it, and on the overall scale of the game, it makes a difference. But if we're just going to look at the game for like five seconds, not too much, because it's already 800 by 600. However, X-Wing still runs at 640 by 480, so we can see a difference there. Looking good. Skip. Welcome to the flag. Yes. Yes, I'm that guy. Don't worry about it. Again, no music. Kind of bummer. And let's go. Not a pixel to be seen. Or, I mean, in the cockpit, yeah, but around the edges of these platforms? Not a one. Let's get some speed. I mean, it's a beauty to behold, really. And it's running at 60 frames per second as well. Nice. Oh, yes. Uh, hmm. While we're here, I can show you a little trick. It's technically cheating, but if you want to, at the start of a level, You go through the very last gate behind you and then you go through the very first gate and you finish the level. And you have a lot of time left. Yeah, it's technically cheating, very much cheating. And this is level two now. That didn't go so well. Uh, normally, I mean, it's up to you whether you want to use this trick or not, but um, it comes in handy uh, when you're doing the Y-Wing missions because that ship is a snail. Also, speaking of the Y-Wing, in... Uh, let's actually play around with it a little bit. Like, the tutorial is over. You can turn off if you want. Let's go here and go at 100%. And we can see down at the center of the screen that we're inching up towards 80. And I believe that's even 
kilometers per hour, maybe. I think that's it. Because distance is uh, measured in kilometers in this game. Notice, it's 80, and if I set everything to engines, it's gonna go up to... Well, well, that's... I'm rusty. It goes up to 100, and if we go everything away from engines, this goes to 60. Keep those numbers in mind. 60, 80, 100. Yes, very good. And let's leave. And I believe I did everything towards X-Wing versus TIE Fighter as well. Let's get that to look good too while we're here. All good, all good, all good. Thank you. So let's start the game then. This window you can just ignore. Uh, it's either play x and versus TIE Fighter or play the expansion Balance of Power, which actually has a story. But let's go with just the base game. And wait for an insufferable long amount of time for the game to load, even though it's on an SSD. Thank you. And let's skip that because it's music from the movies. And no, let's not quit. Let's config. And here we have single player flight engine options, 3D hardware, bilinear uh, bi filtering on. And let's turn space to be off because it's kind of annoying. I keep thinking it's uh, ships flying towards me. Brightness. In X Wing versus TIE Fighter, the brightness isn't as big a problem as it is in X Wing and slightly less in TIE Fighter. But uh, if you find that it's too bright, turn this down. Or if it's too dark, turn it up. Uh, I don't mind either way. It's your life. And 640 by 480 window size. Yes. I... That's odd. I thought X-Wing versus TIE Fighter had support for 800 by 600, just like TIE Fighter. I guess not. I guess I was wrong. One... And then let's fly some solo, and yes, let's go with uh, flying the Y-Wing, right. Oh yes, that's why we're here. How can I forget? Prepare to launch. For launch, actually. Good, let's go this way. Oh, you're sluggish. Oh, you're sluggish. Right. Um, I'm gonna mute them in my headset. Now, at norm normal speeds, we're at 80. If we turn everything into uh, lasers and shields, we're already past 60. We're going at 40, or 39 even. Wow. This is a snail's pace. If I try, and it's... Wow. Yeah, I mean, we're moving towards it, but wow, is it slow. And if we turn everything into the engines, we're already past 100. We go up to 120. Also, could I just see through that container? Well, you're slow, you're slow, you're slow. I can. That's that's real curious. I wonder if that was intended. Probably not. Anyway, yeah, it's. Um, I prefer the X-wing versions, uh, where you can go between sixty and a hundred, and because this, sure, it's faster when you go everything into engines, but it's so slow if you just go for some laser power so real slow so yeah that's something to keep an eye on if you an eye on like eye on no um uh, aborted there we go there we go good thank you and let's quit that thank you so yeah uh, if you're playing x-wing and then play through TIE Fighter and then X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and come up against a, a Y-Wing mission, 
and you find yourself dying a lot, that's probably why. So keep that in mind if you have any inclinations to play X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. I am unsure if they fixed that or kept it in for X-Wing Alliance. But yeah, keep, keep an eye on out uh, there as well. I figured while I was at it, why not add a little comparison shot between the different scaling types and also figure out that you are supposed to pronounce it Langshos rather than Lankos, but there you go. It's in the upper left, we have standard linear, which is zero, alpha blend, which is one, Langshos, which is two, and then point sampling, which is three. And you probably will see the biggest difference around the shields. The alpha blend is very fuzzy and point sampling is very jagged, for instance. And with all of that over and done with, I am a computer. This has been a tutorial on how to get the special editions of X-Wing and TIE Fighter, as well as X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter to look good. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.